Hi, welcome to the Transformations tutorial. In today's tutorial, we are going to be doing a bit of revision on transformations and we'll then progress on to some more sections. In terms of what you need to know to progress on with this tutorial, you need to be familiar with your grade 10 work on transformations. We will begin our discussion by looking at some basic shifts. First we will look at the vertical shift and thereafter the horizontal shift. We'll then progress into expansion and contraction of shapes or rather resizing of shapes, making them bigger or making them smaller. We'll then move into rotation of shapes and we'll look at how to derive a standard formula that we can use when we rotate a shape and thereafter we'll do a brief discussion on inverses. Keep in mind that this entire section deals with shapes that are drawn on a system of axes, which means that each vertex of the shapes are given by a set of coordinates, i.e. an x and a y value. In transformations, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be manipulating those coordinates in such a way to achieve different results, to move the shape around or to resize the shape. Let us first start by looking at some basic notation. Let's use this square over here. I'm going to call this shape F. Each vertex of this square is given by these sets of coordinates. My standard form at the moment is F X Y. Now let us imagine that I double the size of my square. Don't worry about how I'm doing this, we will go through this later on in this tutorial. But let's say I double the size of it. Notice how each coordinate, each x value and each y value has been doubled. That means that my transformation or rather my translation will read f dash x times 2 and y times 2. Each set of coordinates have been doubled. The standard way I will write this translation or transformation will read f x y has been transformed to f dash 2 x 2 y. Let us now look at the vertical shift. The vertical shift is also known as the Y shift. Basically all I'm doing with this shift is I'm taking my shape and I'm either moving it upward or downward. Each of its X values are still remaining the same. Let us look at this example. I'm going to use triangle ABC. The coordinates of this triangle are given by A 2 and 3, B, 2 and negative 1, and C, negative 2, negative 1. Now imagine this. I take that triangle and I shift it upward by one unit. Has my x values changed at all? No. For A, my x value is still 2. My y value has now moved to 4. B, my x coordinate is 2. My y value has now moved up 1 to 0. For C, my x coordinate is still negative 2. My y value has gone up to 0. My shape has been shifted 1 unit upward. That means my translation in this case will read f x y has become f dash x y plus 1. My x value has stayed the same. My y value has been increased by a value of 1. When I am shifting any graph or any um, 
shape upward. I'm going to, my translation is going to read F, X, Y plus a value. And if it's moving downward, my translation will read F, X, Y minus the value. That value is the amount by which it moves up or down by. We are now going to take a look at the horizontal shift or the X shift. The X shift works very similarly to the Y shift, except instead of moving our shape up or down, we are going to be moving it to the left or to the right. Take a look at the shape over here. If I have to move it three units to the right, notice that each X value increases by three units. Each Y value still remains constant. If I had to take that same graph and move it to the left by two units, each X value would decrease by two units, but each Y value would still stay the same. The standard translation for an X shift will read G of X, assuming that we are working with shape G, G X Y would translate to form g dash x plus or minus the value by which we are shifting it by and our corresponding y values. Now let us take a closer look at expansions and contractions. I'm going to start by using this shape over here. This is a square. I'm going to expand it or rather I'm going to double it. Notice how each X and Y value doubled from the original. This is known as, as an expansion. The standard notation here will be, assuming that this was graph H or shape H, HXY has been transformed to form 2X, 2Y. Each X and Y value has been doubled. The opposite happens for a contraction. Instead of, if we, if we had to half our original shape, our new graph would read H a half X a half Y. Please note that all of the transformations we have done thus far can all be applied together in the same type of question. I want you to have a go at the following examples in your workbook, press pause on your DVD player and when you return we'll go through it together. Looking at this first example over here, I said that ABCD is a shape given by points A, 2 and 2, B, 3 and negative 2. C negative 2 negative 3 and D negative 4 3. The first thing we're going to be looking at is the transformation given by XY to form X Y plus 3. This is going to be a Y shift which means that our shape is going to be shifted three units up. Let's look at what that means. Our original point A was 2 and 2. Our new point is going to be 2 and 2 plus 3 which is 2 and 5. So that's going to be over there. Point B was 3 and negative 2. It's now still going to be the normal 3 except the new point is the new y value rather is going to be negative 2 plus 3 which is positive 1 and that's point that's the new B that's the new A the new C is going to be negative 2 it stays x value of negative 2 negative 2 plus 3 is going to give me oh sorry negative 3 plus 3 is going to give me 0 
so that's the new point C and the new point D is going to be negative 4 and 3 plus 3 which is going to be 6 which is going to fall over there and that's the new D that means that our shape is going to look very much like this notice that all that's happened is that the original shape has just been shifted three units upward. The next transformation that I described was XY becomes XY minus 2. Now this is going to be exactly the same thing as the previous example except now we're shifting it two units downward. Our y value, our new y values are going to be moved two units downward. So that's the new A point, that's the new B, the new C, and the new D is going to be two units downward. That means that our shape is going to look like this. And all that's happened is we've moved our graph two units down. The third transformation we're looking at is XY becomes XY X plus 3Y. Now in order for this to happen it means that our graph or our shape is being shifted three units to the right. 2 plus 3 is 5 that means that our new A is going to be over there. Notice that its Y value is staying the same. The new B value is going to be at X is equal to 6. The new C value is going to be at X is equal to positive 1 but still Y is equal to negative 3 and the new D value is at negative 1. That means that our graph looks like this. All that's happened is our shape has been shifted three units to the right. The fourth transformation we are going to be looking at is XY becomes X minus 2 Y that means that my graph is shifting two units to my left so my new A point is going to be at 0 my new B point is going to be at 1 notice that it's still keeping the same Y values my new C point is going to be at negative 4 and my new D is going to be at negative 6. That means that our, my graph looks like this. Again, notice all that's happened is it's moved two units to my left. We are now going to look at expansions xy becomes 2x 2y sorry 3x 3y and let's look at what's going to happen original a point was 2 and 2 new a point is going to be 6 and 6 3 times 2 is 6 which is going to be over there somewhere and 2 times 3 as well is 6 that means that our new point for that one is going to be 6 and 6 which is over there let's just uh, draw that transformation here it's xy becomes 3x 3y the b value is going to become 3 times 3 which is 9 in place of x negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 so that point is going to come somewhere over here that's the new B the new C value is going to be at negative 6 
and that negative 9 so that's going to be underneath the screen so I'm just going to draw that in right over here at the bottom I want you to remember that it is at the bottom of the screen and the same thing with this D point it's going to be also out of our screen but basically can you see what's happened is that our shape has just been made three times as big and D point is off the screen the last transformation we are going to be looking at is XY or rather the last expansion XY becomes X over 2 Y over 2 all we're doing is we're now contracting it the new X value of A is not going to be 2 but rather 2 over 2 which is 1 and the Y value as well 2 over 2 which is 1 that's the new A the new B value is going to be 1 and a half X is equal to 1 and a half Y is equal to negative 1 which is over there the new C value is going to be negative 1 and negative 1 and a half so that's going to be over there that's the new C value and the new D value is going to be X is negative 2 and Y is equal to positive 1 and a half so that's going to be over there that means that our new shape looks like that and that is a contraction now let's have a go at rotations rotations are different from shifts and expansions and contractions in that we are keeping the size of the graph the same and we are keeping the center of the graph the same except we are turning it I want you to have a go at the following examples press pause on your DVD player and when you return we'll have a look at it we are now going to look at transformation in terms of rotations we've got a shape PQR that has the coordinates 2 and 5 for P, 4 and 3 for Q and 1 and 1 for R what we are going to do is we're going to start off by doing a 90 degrees clockwise rotation 90 degrees clockwise means that we're taking our graph and we're turning it 90 degrees in this direction now I want you to think of it almost as if there's a line over here that's attached to that and we're going to do a 90 degree rotation and we, we're basically taking this entire graph and we're moving it 90 degrees what is that going to give us? well the new R value is going to be over there if I take the point Q and I rotate it 90 degrees you're going to notice that if I rotate this 90 degrees it's going to come over here at negative 3 and positive oh sorry at positive 3 and negative 4 and if I take the point P and again I rotate it 90 degrees I'm going to find that I'm going to get an X value of 5 and a Y value of negative 2 that means that my new shape is going to look like this and this is a 90 degree rotation I've just taken the shape over here and I've rotated it 90 degrees to there RP is over there, it was over there, it's now over there P 
PQ was over there, it's now over there. QR was over there, it's now over there. Describe this rotation or describe this transformation. Now let's look at this carefully. Look at point P. The original P was X is equal to 2, Y is equal to 5. The new P has an X value which is the exact same as the Y value and a Y value which is the negative X value. That means that the transformation went XY became Y negative X. Y negative X this is the rotation that describes 90 degrees clockwise. We are now going to look at the rotation 180 degrees. Now the reason 180 degrees I don't say clockwise or anti-clockwise because think about this if I'm rotating something anti-clockwise 180 degrees isn't it the same as rotating it clockwise 180 degrees. Now if I rotate this 180 degrees clockwise my new R is going to be over there. My new Q is going to be basically over here. Think about this. I'm taking it from there and I'm doing a 180 degree rotation. That means that my new Q is going to be at x is equal to negative 4, y is equal to negative 3. Remember I've rotated it clockwise 180 degrees or anti-clockwise whichever um, one suits you. My new p-value, so this is my new q, which is negative 4, negative 3. My new p-value is going to happen over here at negative 2 and negative 5. Which means that my shape now looks like this. Something like that. All that I've done is I've taken my shape and I've rotated it whichever way you want to look at it, clockwise or anti-clockwise, 180 degrees. My R values are negative 1, negative 1. Now let's look at my transformation. My original XY, what's become of it? P has maintained its X value except it's now negative. Y has maintained its Y value or rather P has maintained its Y value except it's negative. So a 180 degree rotation means that XY becomes negative X negative Y. And the same thing you can see happen for Q. The next transformation we're going to be looking at is 90 degrees anti-clockwise. Now anti-clockwise 90 degrees is the same as clockwise 270 degrees. What's going to happen with that? Think about R. It's going to go over there, over there, and then it's going to pop up over here. So that's 90, 180, 270 degrees, or rather 90 degrees anti-clockwise. Q is going to go from being 4 and 3. It's going to rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Alternatively, 90 degrees, I mean 270 degrees clockwise. Alternatively, 90 degrees anti-clockwise. Which means that Q is going to take the point X is negative 3, Y is positive that's the new Q 
x is negative 3, y is positive 4. Remember, all we've done is we've shifted it 90 degrees anti-clockwise. P as well, 90 degrees anti-clockwise, is going to take us to the point x is negative 5, y is equal to 2, and that's the new P. That means that our, our new shape looks something like that. And that is a rotation 90 degrees anti-clockwise. Now let's look at what this means. Our original x, y now became, look at what happened with p. The x and the y swapped around, except that became negative, that stayed positive. And this is the rotation for 90 degrees anti-clockwise. Notice how the rotations around 180 degrees and 90 degrees, either clockwise or anti-clockwise, were fairly easy to do. In fact, they were so simple, it was almost as if there was a standard formula we could use. The standard formulas for the 90 degrees and 180 degree transformations I have included in your workbook. But, what about the last two transformations, where we, had to tra where we had to rotate it 30 degrees clockwise or 240 degrees clockwise? Is there a standard formula we can use for that? Thankfully there is. The standard formula reads as follows. Of graph F or of shape F given by XY if we rotate it by theta amount of degrees, the new x is going to be given by x cos theta. That means that it's going to be our original x coordinate multiplied by cos of the angle by which we are rotating it. Remember it is always the clockwise angle. And the y coordinate will be given by y sine theta. Like I say, it is the clockwise angle. So, if we had to rotate it anti-clockwise by 60 degrees, it's as if we've rotated it clockwise by 300 degrees. Have a go at the following examples. Press pause on your DVD player and when you return, we'll go through it together. We are now going to look at transformations that are not 90 degrees or 180 degrees and don't have a standard sort of rule of transformation. I'm going to look at the example of 60 degrees. Now if I transform this shape by 60 degrees, basically I'm going to be taking each value and I'm going to be moving it 60 degrees, which is more or less there, 60 degrees. So that's my new R that's being transformed by 60 degrees. And I'm going to do that with each point. So if I do that with point Q, that's going to come, 60 degrees is going to go somewhere over there. That's point Q. And point P moving 60 degrees is going to come somewhere over there. So basically my new shape is going to look very much like this point P, Q and R, except look at the coordinates, there's no fixed transformation that's happened. Or rather, when we did a 90 degree transformation, it was easy to say that we swapped the x's and the y's around, or we made the one negative, we made the other positive. But in this case here, this is a 60 degree transformation, it's not so simple. There is, however, a standard notation we can use. 
For example, to get the new x and y values of p, to get the new x value, the standard notation we are going to use is we are going to say the x value is going to be given by the original x multiplied by cos theta, that's our angle of rotation, minus y sine, the original y sine of theta. And the y value or the y coordinate is going to be given by x cos theta sorry by y cos theta plus x sine theta now remember that in standard trigonometry our degrees go 0 degrees 90 degrees 180 degrees 270 degrees and 360 degrees if we've rotated it clockwise 60 degrees Notice our standard Cartesian plane goes anti-clockwise. That means that instead of saying that we've rotated it 60 degrees, we've actually rotated it 300 degrees. Or instead of saying 300, we could say we've rotated it negative 60 degrees. That means in this case, theta is going to be negative 60 degrees. Now let us look at what their transformation will mean. To get the new values of p, or the new p values, to get the new x value, we're going to say the original x value of 2 multiplied by cos of negative 60, because it's anti-clockwise, minus the original y multiplied by sine, again, of negative 60 degrees. You can do this very simply on a calculator. You're just going to type in 2 cos of negative 60 minus 5 sine negative 60, which will, which will give me an answer of positive 5.33. My new y value of p is going to be given by the original y value of 5 cos negative 60 plus the original x2 sine negative 60 which will give me an answer of 5 cos negative 60 plus 2 sine negative 60 gives me an answer of 0 0.77 that's my new x value that's my new y value that means my coordinates of p are 5.33 and 0.77. To get the new coordinates of r, to get its x value we're going to substitute its original x value of 1, its original y value of 1, which will give us cos of negative 60 plus, sorry, cos negative 60 minus sine negative 60, which will give me an answer of 1.37. That is the new x coordinates of r. To get the new y coordinates of r, I'm just going to substitute the 1 and 1 in the x value of 1, the y value of 1, sorry, the y value of 1, the x value of 1. So that's going to be cos of negative 60 plus sine of negative 60, which gives me an answer of negative 0 0.37. And I want you to fill that in, fill all of these things in, in the space that I've provided for you in the workbook. The x value is 1.37, the y value is negative 0.37. We are now going to look at the new values of q. The new x value of q is going to be 
the original x value of q being 4 cos of negative 60 minus the y value of 3 sine of negative 60 4 cos of negative 60 minus sine minus 3 sine of negative 60 gives me an answer of 4.598 or 4.60. That is my new chord, my new x coordinates of the new q. The new y coordinates are going to be given by the original y value 3 cos of negative 60 plus 4 sine of negative 60. which gives me an answer of negative 1.96. That means that the new Q is given by an X value of 4.60 and a Y value of negative 1.96. Write all of this information down. We are now going to go back onto our graph and fill that information in. If I can find any space on this. The new p-value we said is going to have coordinates of x is equal to 5.33 and y is equal to 0.77 and that makes sense 0.77 is over there 5.33 is over there so that holds true the new q coordinates I said are positive 4.6 now obviously I've drawn my graph a little bit inaccurately my new q's coordinates should in reality be somewhere over here so that line would go like that my new Q's coordinates are given by X is 4.60 and Y is negative 1.96 so obviously it's a bit higher than what I've drawn it above there it should be somewhere over there and over there and the new R coordinates, you can fill that in on your graph. X is equal to positive 1.37, which is over there. And Y is equal to negative 0.37, which should be a bit higher, should be somewhere over there. So that basically gives us the coordinates of our new shape PQR. And that was using the formula to do the transformation. Remember we moved negative 60 degrees because we moved clockwise. Fill in the standard notation in the exercise book in the space that I've provided for you. The last bit of work we will be looking at under transformations is called the inverse. Now an inverse is quite an easy thing. All it is is our x values now become our y values and our y values, or rather our y coordinates, become our x coordinates. The translation of that would read a x y, assuming that we are using shape a, would translate to form a dash y x, or a dash x arrow y, which means that x has become y and y arrow x which means that our y coordinates have become x. Have a look at this example over here. This is a rectangle with the coordinates a, b, c and d given. We are now going to do an inverse which means that every x coordinate of a I mean x, every x coordinate of the vertex is now going to become the y coordinate and every y coordinate is going to become the x coordinate. 
Look at the new shape that it forms. It's almost as if we've rotated it around the line y is equal to x. Have a go at the following examples. Please note that they are not confined to inverses. It is examples that are the accumulation of everything we have done thus far in transformations. As I've said before, the section transformations is an all-inclusive section. You do not get any one thing on its own. Press pause on your DVD player and when you return we'll go through it together. The transformations exercise that I gave you to do had this figure over here with the coordinates A, B, C and D given. The first thing that, what, that was asked of you was to find the coordinates of A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D which is the image rotated 90 degrees clockwise. Now we'll remember that our 90 degree clockwise rotation the standard form of that was xy becomes y negative x. That means that when we're rotating this figure here 90 degrees clockwise the new a is going to be given as 4 0 xy has become y negative x the new b will be given by 4 negative 3 the new c will be given by 0 positive 1 and the new d will be given by 2 positive 1 all that's happened is xy has become y negative x the next one we're looking at is an anti-clockwise rotation of 90 degrees. 90 degrees anti-clockwise. Now we, we know that the 90 degrees anti-clockwise rotation, the rule is xy becomes negative y x. That means that our new a will be given as negative 4 0 remember that's 90 degrees anti-clockwise the new B will be given by negative 4 3 the new C will be given by 0 negative 1 remember the sign of X doesn't change and the new D will be given by negative 2 negative 1 and that is the 90 degrees anti-clockwise rotation. I then asked you for a 180 degrees rotation. It doesn't matter whether we're going clockwise or anti-clockwise, it's still the same thing. The 180 degrees rotation says that xy becomes negative x, negative y. In this case, the 180 degrees rotation will mean that our new A will be given as still 0, negative 4. Our new B will be given as negative 3, negative 4. Our new C will be given as positive 1, 0. And our new D will be given as positive 1, negative 2. And this is the 180 degree rotation. All of these graphs you can sketch if you want to just to see how it works. I then asked you to rotate to rotate point A 60 degrees clockwise. Now remember we are going 60 degrees clockwise which is the same as 300 degrees anti-clockwise and we are always looking with the equation or the standard form of the rotation that's not 90 degrees or 180 degrees we are always looking at it in the anti-clockwise direction 
the standard formula says that the new a will be given by x cos theta minus y sine theta and my y value will be given by y cos theta plus x sine theta which means that my new a will be given by the original a uh, the original x of a which is 0 cos of 300 minus 4 sine 300 y which is 4 cos 300 plus x which is 0 sine 300 is just 0 uh, 0 times anything is 0 as is the case here so we're left with negative 4 sine 300 and 4 cos 300 if I use my calculator for that which I can do negative 4 sine 300 is equal to 2 root 3 and that's positive because sine of 300 is negative times the negative 4 is going to be positive 4 cos of 300 is also going to be positive and that's going to be positive 2 that means my coordinates of a are going to be given as 2 root 3 and 2 and that's the 60 degrees and uh, 60 degrees clockwise rotation the next one number 5 that we're going to be looking at deals with the 60 degrees anti-clockwise now we are looking at the anti-clockwise direction we're still going to use the standard formula except this time we're looking for the coordinates of the new b we're still going to use the standard formula x cos theta minus y sine theta the x value of b is going to be 3 cos now because it's 60 degrees anti-clockwise we just put it in as 60 degrees minus y which is 4 sine 60 and the y coordinate is going to be given by 4 cos 60 plus x value of 3 sine 60 and that's the new b coordinates calculating it we can use special angles or we can use our calculators cos 60 is a half times 3 is 3 over 2 minus 4 sine 60 sine 60 is equal to root 3 over 2 multiplied by 4 over 1 2 into itself goes let's just leave that as a 2 and the y coordinate is going to be given by 4 cos of 60 4 cos of 60 is the same as 1 over 2 times 4 which is 4 over 2 plus 3 sine 60 which is plus 3 root 3 over 2 because sine 60 is root 3 over 2 that means that the coordinates of b are going to be given as 3 minus 4 root 3 all over 2 and 4 plus 3 root 3 all over 2 you can work this out into decimal form or you can leave it in this form either way is fine the next thing I asked you to do was I said if polygon ABCD is rotated 90 degrees clockwise then enlarged by a factor of 2 what are the new coordinates a double dash b double dash c and d now we enlarging it by a factor of 2 but first we're rotating it 90 degrees clockwise now the 90 degrees clockwise rotation you will remember was x y became neg uh, became y 
negative x. That means that the a coordinates are going to become 4 and 0 multiplied by 2 is going to give me 8 and 0. The new b's coordinates are going to be 4 and negative 3 multiplied by 2 is going to give me 8 and negative 6. The new c's coordinates are going to be 0 and negative 1 multiplied by 2 is 0 and negative 2. The new d's coordinates are going to be 2. Sorry, when I, the c's coordinates, I'm wrong about that. When that changes over, it becomes negative. Negative times negative is positive. That's going to give me positive 2. The new d's coordinates are going to be 2 and positive 1 multiplied by 2 is going to give me 4 and positive 2. These are the new coordinates. Now I'm just going to sketch this. A will be the point x value of 8, y value of 0, so that's going to be over there. The new b is going to have the coordinates of 8 and negative 6, so that's going to be somewhere over there. The new c is going to have x coordinates of 0, y coordinate of 2, which is going to be somewhere over there. And the new d coordinate, x coordinate of 4, y coordinate of 2. So basically you can see what's happened is we've taken the shape, we've rotated it 90 degrees clockwise, but we've also enlarged it by a factor of 2. The next one I asked you to do was to describe the general transformation of the describe the general transformation of this number